you might be looking at a balance sheet and see the phrase cash and cash equivalents and you might be kind of wondering well what does this mean cash equivalent what's something that's equivalent to cash uh, so it bears uh, mentioning that cash and cash equivalents is a lot more uh, than just any money or cash that the firm uh, happens to have in its vault or, or in the bank so first let's just define what we mean by cash so cash is any kind of currency that the firm has and it's also demand deposits and by demand deposits we're basically talking about say the firm has a corporate bank account and they can just go and anytime they want they could demand uh, that money and, and just have it given to them so that's a demand deposit now that's that's this cash component now the the trickier part is we're talking about these these equivalents uh, so the cash equivalents what we're basically talking about is is short term and by short term we're actually talking about less than three months okay so three months or less is a, is a highly liquid investment so what what do we mean by highly liquid what we're talking about they're not basically speculating or something this is something with uh with very little risk little risk it's not speculative it's just some kind of a you know they've got a cd or something at their bank or something like that where basically within three months uh they're going to have that cash so for all intents and purposes uh it is the equivalent of cash uh, so you might also see when you look at this this cash and cash equivalent section uh, you might see something called uh, restricted cash restricted so for some reason the firm might have uh, a, a debt covenant or something uh, that is basically restricting their cash and what they can do with it uh, so now restricted cash is, is also kind of got a caveat so restricted if it's restricted let's say for a current obligation so it's restricted because uh, the firm is going to have to pay some bill in, in four months uh, and, and they need to they, they have to there's some kind of contractual obligation uh, for them to, to keep that cash to maintain you know a thousand dollars or something to meet this obligation uh, then that would be a current asset which would mean it would end up in this cash cash and cash equivalents category right so so that's where most of restricted cash is going to go however it's possible um, that that is basically for a non-current obligation there's just there's just some other reason uh, that the firm is being legally obligated to restrict its cash and for that if, if that's the case then it's, it's basically going to be a non-current asset and it's going to end up in uh, being ca classified in other assets under non-current uh, so just bear in mind that it's possible entirely possible that the firm has cash that is not showing up in cash and cash equivalents uh, but is actually because it's restricted for some kind of non-current obligation uh, it's actually going to end up being in non-current assets but any kind of other restricted cash or some kind of current obligation uh, it's going to end up being part of cash and cash equivalents and it'll kind of be its own separate line item you'll have like you'll have cash and cash equivalents and then and then you'll have this restricted cash uh, right below it